so uh, you know, comment or something like that. But then land fuel fire is a totally different thing, which is like uh, gaining a lot of importance and uh, critical, uh, what to say, uh, response nowadays from the public as well as from the uh, you know public sector. That is the governing sector. So uh, this is like you know two landfill uh, photos that I have put here. This is one is Kazipur and Pansa. Why I put this is these are the two little mountains in India that is like you know one is 70 meter high and the other one is 60 meter high in Delhi. It looks as if you know it's a small mountain over there. And once it caught fire, it was very difficult to extinguish, and the whole area was like. Uh, Packed with smoke for several days, it was very difficult to, what to say, you know, treat that or remove that. Uh, one more incident that happened is a uh, is a lunar landfill that is in Mumbai. The smoke that came out of the landfill was captured by the satellites, so it was to that extent. So people have cat categorized this also as a disaster. I think you know uh, nowadays, uh, I think the recent one was in like in Kerala, if I'm not wrong. That one was also a huge thing. Even in Bengaluru, a lot of uh, fire incidents happen, but luckily it is under control. But then if you take Delhi, it is like mostly, you know, you cannot, you cannot control it. So, it's a serious, what to say, uh, concerning issue, because the way it is going is like, we cannot stop, uh, you know, the production of waste or the generation of waste, but then we are not able to find a proper method to dispose it always. Also, some people say incineration is good and all those things, but then given the composition of Indian waste where the moisture content is too much, uh, techniques like incineration and other thermal methods are not effective because of the moisture content. And also, whatever methods are there, landfill and all those things, you need huge amount of spaces for that, which is uh, very, very difficult to get in uh, today's age. If you see Bangalore also, it is very difficult. So, there was this issue that came up a decade ago, and we, we suggested to BJP to use the quarantine in the landfills, uh, sorry, the quarry sites, abandoned quarry sites, which were quarantined and that can be used. So then they had to short it properly to prevent the groundwater pollution so that you know nothing goes beyond the uh, ground and then it doesn't pollute anything. But then that also was not tied properly. So this is uh, what to say. It's, it's a common issue particularly in the developing countries. At least in the developed countries what happens is like you know if you take the West, they have a very good uh, segregation system. They are pioneers in segregation. So they have gone with a thermal, uh, what to say, uh, system where in uh, separate techniques like gasification or incineration techniques are there. They make use of those techniques. They generate the heat, they use that heat into uh, convert that into electricity and they use it to light up the cities. When uh, whereas if you take the US, they are so good at management of the landfills that you know they don't segregate anything. They just dump everything in the landfills and then whatever energy comes out of it, like in the form of heat, they, they convert it into what to say, electricity and they use it. So that is also still good, but then we are somewhere in the middle taken somewhere, some, uh, what to say, portions from the US manual as well as some from the UK manual and we have like jacked it up. If you see the CPHO manual and the other manuals, it is very difficult. So what we say is that, you know, the organic waste should be, you know, uh, pre-treated first using some techniques like, you know, composting or something like that. And then uh, the rest, whatever is the partially degradable thing or the, you know, inert thing should go to the landfill. But then that is not the case always because you know it is a huge amount of waste they don't really manage it properly and they just go and dump it there. And once they start dumping it there, it becomes a huge problem once it's fired up. So today's session we'll see like you know how is it, what is it, why is it, what are the you know measures, how it can be dealt with. It is not an easy problem that you know looks like uh, as it is from a very far away distance because you have seen now uh, in instances where the landfill fires, because of the landfill fires, the waste that is like there at the bottom of the, uh, what to say, heap, it's like just collapses and whatever people or settlement is there uh, surrounding the landfill, it's just, it just engulfs it or it just, you know, it just piles over that. Uh, one of the major things reported was like, you know, I think a couple of weeks back in Philippines where are almost like, uh, I think 150 or 170 people died because of the slide. There was a huge fire then, you know, in order to control the fire, they were like putting water. The water was like, you know, it didn't have any place to go. It just went down and it took all the waste with it. And it you know, just landed over the settlement that was like just beside the land. So uh, these are some of the new uh, newspaper clippings that is like, you know, raising the concerns over this natural fires. So, you know, you can see several things that come up. So some of the major things are in Delhi and Karnataka, Bangalore also, we have, uh, we have had some reports, uh, the recent one was in Kerala, and uh, you know, 
some places like uh, Bhopal and other places they are trying to manage by mine mining and other techniques. But then uh, this is really a huge concern. And let's see, this is definitely not a natural disaster. Mm -hmm. It's a anthropogenic one. And uh, the thing is like, the plain fact is that it shouldn't be like this. People have left it to that extent that, you know, we'll see it later, we'll see it later, just pile it up there, just put it there. And then what happens later is a disaster. That is an artificial or anthropogenic one comes up. So if you see what is happening in the present, what is the, uh, what is the status of the existing anthropos, because um, the waste that is generated from a municipal area or a city like Bangalore, where does it go? It has to go to some place, like in the outskirts of the city where it can be disposed of safely, because whatever is generated as a waste cannot be utilized fully or completely 100% or 200%. So, the status as of now is like, you know, they are the ultimate disposal options even today. I think in India around 70 to 90 percentage of the urban waste is dumped into the landfills. Landfills are usually called as engineered landfills, but this shouldn't be called as landfills. It's like usually the push for of the dump sites, as far as it is concerned. So most of the landfills are non scientific and non engineered. Urban area generates around 60 to 80 tons of waste. So we can imagine how much that is. And, uh, predicted that, you know, it will increase to 165 million tons by 2030. So we need to that far, manage that much space or that much waste and it additionally requires that much space. People are coming up with, uh, with, with new technologies, but then, you know, ultimately, you know, if you um, talk to some top people, uh, technically advanced people, even as for me, it's a management problem. People should manage it properly, the, the BBMP or the local government whoever is there, over is, you know, handed over the authority, they should manage it properly. Because, you know, uh, techniques like, you know, thermal uh, treatment and, and other things will not work in India because of the moisture. I think the first uh, incineration plant was set up in Delhi in 1984. It didn't even run for two months because of the moisture content. They didn't, they didn't design it properly. The moisture was like way too high. The uh, moisture content should be less than 10% at least for uh, incineration, proper incineration to happen. And it was like way above that. Because they chose to 30 percent, they didn't know how to reduce the mushroom and reduce the waste. So that is one of the major issues. Then 43 tons of waste is collected annually, that is only the collection part. Like you see the other part, like you know, 90 percent of it is like, you know, dumped into the dump sites. So the one more thing is like, you know, the landfills, they rank as the third most anthropogenic source of methane, that is like close to, contributes to around the 7 to 10 percent internationally. If you see the global carbon market or the global carbon at least that is called. So in there uh, you can see you know landfill tracking as the you know, third one. The agriculture and industry part being the first and the second. So because you know uh, as a as a result of uh, what to say anaerobic degradation, methane and carbon dioxide are still released. So like you know this uh, like uh, what is it both contribute to carbon. So methane is having around 28 percentage or 28 times the global warming effect potential that CO2 has. That is why it is very critical. So techniques like you know waste bio mining or uh, bio earthing is being done. I think you also heard in the or seen in the thing. They just remove the waste that is piled up over there, uh, pass it through a uh, what to say uh, <clears throat> it's called a trover actually. It's it's nothing like a nothing but a what to say segregator with, with different pore sizes. And whatever they get, they use it as a fill or you cannot categorize that material or you cannot put that material in, in any of the existing categories. Say for example, sand or any civil engineering material like sand or pigate or whatever it is. It's a different material that is like partially organic, partially inert. Uh, no one knows the properties of that. What is it? How is it? How will it react? Whether it can be used as a fill, whether it can be used as some other thing. No one knows. Some research has been done on that. Because the kind of bio that, that, that we get in India after uh, what is it, mining is totally different. So this, this biomining practices are also leading to toxic waste. So because you know, we, we, in India it's like you know, people don't have that kind of awareness where you know, what kind of waste should go into the into the of those things. People normally dispose of chemical and battery based <coughs> waste also into the into the landfills. Whereas now there is strict regulations saying that you know, the hazardous waste should be categorized separately, the electronic waste or the waste should be categorized separately. Maybe you know, some Sometime earlier it was not the case, so then it was dumped into the landfill. But then though it was dumped, then now it is showing the effect. So the biomining plants lack to the automated disposal techniques of waste, you know, bio-earth, so no one knows. 
So now if you see the causes, there are multiple causes of this. So one is like improper segre segregation, as I said, you know, it is a, it, it, it comes down to that, that, you know, there are techniques, there are things, but then are we really able to spend that much for creating our waste? So frankly, no. So sometime earlier, um, there was a, there was a, what to say, a group of people who came from Malaysia and uh, Indonesia who were claiming that they are like experts in waste, what to say, treatment. So they came to BBMP when I was a part of the community, they told that if they take up this thing. There was also a group from Switzerland who were like claiming that you know, they would do this kind of thing. But then when they discussed the landfills and other things, they just packed off. There was no reason as to make it. They didn't give any proper reason, they just delayed that saying that you know, we'll, we'll visit, we'll visit. So you know, that, that was like kind of the aspect. So it just shows the pathetic state of us, like how bad are we managing the waste. Even the people, so the so-called, the good people or the experts are also backing off in, in managing the waste. So the, the, the reasons are like, you know, improper segregation, usually what happens is that, you know, people do segregate when they collect it from your households at the doorsteps, but then when it goes to the landfill, they just dump everything over there, like, you know, so it's a mixed waste again. So then, you know, smoking the rack, because this is some of the major reasons. The rack pickers are good because, you know, they segregate all the useful things, at least, you know, that has to go into the thing. But then, you know, habits like smoking over there or, you know, burning things, you know, it just catches fire, like, you know, wild. The wide size, then the absence of any fire management system. The so-called fire management system, um, frankly, doesn't exist. They don't want to, you know, uh, concentrate on these things. I think in whole of India there is one fire uh, engineering institute in Nagpur. Apart from that, I don't think so. There's any fire management courses or engineering or what you say things. So if you see, um, the fire management plant is not giving that much emphasis. So the general talk is that even in at the top of the, you know, uh, hierarchy, they say that if, if there is a fire, get the fire extinguisher and put it off, that's it. They don't bother about the other effects. So the five characteristics matter so that maybe, you know, bamboo, the temperature doesn't go that much. But then if you, if you take, uh, say, places like, you know, Nagpur and uh, uh, Delhi, during the summer, the, the temperature itself goes up to, you know, 49, 50 degrees. And this, you know, if you see, uh, the summing up effect of the what is it, compound effect. Over a couple of uh, weeks or three weeks time, the surface temperature of the landfill goes up to 70 degrees or 80 degrees, which is more than enough for causing a fire. Just just a scratch from somewhere and you know, it will just ignite. So, so we'll see how it is, uh, you know, igniting what is and how is it done. Then coming to the climatic conditions, as I said. Then the most important thing is the biological and chemical reactions that is happening inside the landfill because there is organic waste, it needs to degrade. So the, the, the solid component that is there, it gets converted into the liquid and the solid and the gases. Like, you know, mostly the solid waste thing gets converted into gases like methane and uh, carbon dioxide and also some of it goes into the leachate. During this process, this is an exothermic process, uh, both aerobic and anaerobic thing. So a lot of energy is being uh, what is released. And this energy, if it doesn't dissipate within the landfill, if it is like, you know, you know what to say, packed within a small area over a period of time, this also causes a, uh, what to say, uh, ignition. So these are like several factors. So there are like, you know, a, a landfill, if you take, it just looks like a heap, but then if you go into the scientific part of it, there is a lot of uh, physical, chemical, biological reactions that is happening in there, which is causing all these uh, things. So if you try to understand those things, then we'll be uh, able to manage these things in a better way. And I, I wouldn't call advanced technologies here for managing this, but then, you know, simple techniques uh, can be sufficient for managing these factors. But then the understanding of these things has to be in detail or in depth. So the risk posed by landfill fires is very high in India, as most of the landfills are not much yet. And there are cases of, what say, frequent landfill fires. So this is what happens inside the landfill. So if you take the biochemical waste degradation, I'll come to uh, the detail part. So there is a chemical uh, part also that is happening that is like, you know, oxidation of metals if there is any. Uh, because of the previously, what is it, disposed metals, they oxidize and when they oxidize, they release a lot of uh, heat. And second thing is like, you know, anaerobic degradation in the landfill or like, you know, with beneath the landfill at some surface, at some depth. And at the surface, there is aerobic degradation happening. Both the processes release heat. So, you know, all these uh, should be fresh and, you know, old waste, they take part in the, uh, what is 
degradation process because of that there is heat generation, there is heat. So you know, so what happens is like there is heat generation because of that there is a temperature rise and formation of the fire and that will come to where and you know there is an optimum, uh, what do you say, uh, quantity of oxygen that is there, heat and fuel which sparks the or ignites uh, results in ignition. So uh, when this happens, there is a smoldering. Smoldering is nothing but a change in the physical form of the component or the waste particle, whatever is there. There is a slight modification or change in the physical form, whereas ignition is complete change in the form. You know, there is a complete uh, is a change. And uh, so this results also in the high surface temperature sample temperatures, which ultimately leads to environmental pollution and high uh, disaster is waiting if you don't even like you know. If you don't uh, take proper steps or optimal steps, so this is just a chart showing the frequency of landfill fires. I think uh, Delhi was uh, the most. If you see, you know, the frequent fires that happened, so you can see all the states here being listed. What are the different landfills? How many uh, frequent fire incidents were uh, reported? So almost all the places in India, all the states in India, have reported some landfill fires. So, uh, coming to what are the challenges in, in, in handling these things? Uh, so, one thing is like, you know, the, the subsurface fires. So, here, uh, I'll go in detail. The fires that happen at certain depth are called subsurface fires, and the fires that happen at the surface are called surface fires. It is normally categorized like surface and subsurface fires. So, the subsurface fires are the most intense ones and uh, the most complex ones because uh, we didn't get to see them, we have to have some parameters in order to, you know, even to know whether there is a fire that is happening inside or not. So, you know, that is one of the most complex on surface fires. Of course, if we see some smoke or some fire, we can, you know, take initiate or uh, immediate steps to put off that or to extinguish it. Then coming to, you know, the subsurface fires, it can propagate from one place to another depending upon the heat capacity or the, you know, surrounding particles, uh, their, their properties, etc. Then limited studies are done. In fact, in India, there is no studies that has been carried out on these kind of uh, things. Uh, first study was done in, uh, done by us in the, in the early 2019, uh, just before COVID. So there is an integrated mechanism that is uh, that is the most optimal solution that is uh, you know seen as a seen as a proper solution for this management. So if you see, if you take the literature, the landfill fires, there are different types of fires, the occurrences, detection, extinguishing methods, there are different things that are given in the literature, but then these mostly are uh, from the uh, from the literature that is written you know, from outside, not in India, so that also matters a lot. People outside are, outside India, they are, they are like advanced, they are ready to spend the amount, they are ready to take the risk, but then in India, it is not like that. Then coming to spontaneous ignition and fire propagation, what is this spontaneous ignition? ignition? How does it happen? We could have uh, conducted a couple of studies there. And then how does the fire propagate at the surface and also uh, you know, in the subsurface? Coming to biological and chemical self heating of waste, this is one of the major issues because we know that there is a reaction that is happening and there is the heat that is coming out, but then how much of it is coming out? How is it affecting those things? So we took up the study and we took up the study, DSK invited us to you know, do the study and find a solution for the uh, raising concerns of the you know the fires that is happening. So the most concern was in Delhi that was Kokla, Balswa and uh, uh, Gazipur. So we took up this. So this is how it is. So the landfill fires can be categorized as continuous, deliberate and expected. Deliberate is sometimes what happens is the site in charges what they do uh, if there is a huge amount of waste coming in and if it is piled up then what they do is like you know they deliberately you know fire put fire to that so that you know what happens when there is a fire the volume reduces uh, let's say a heap of fire reduces to ashes which can be easily cleaned at a later part that can be easily washed away so that is a deliberate thing so this is also done by a lot of people an accidental thing like you know the raw grab pickers or someone like you know trying to say you know they are doing something or smoking or something like that that is something like accidentally popped. Then if you take a spontaneous one, there is a subsurface and a surface one and both for both the things the contributions from the chemical and biological process. So this is um, a video that I took from 